Cool. So, um, well, a few things. Um, I think um, I'm crossing my fingers, but I think I finished version two of the spec. Uh, <laughs> I think so. Um, so all, all the issues about the uh, version two review are finished and addressed. So um, that means it should be done. But um, at the same time, I'm doing the, the parser, the Node.js parser, the JavaScript parser, not only Node.js. Uh, so I just published a few minutes ago um, the new the new parser uh, JavaScript parser is is already on npm based on completely on JavaScript no no um, native stuff um, and I, so at the same time I'm using this to test the new features of the of version two right. And see how they play. And then next, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to replicate, um, build some use cases, like for instance, um, uh, like the the strict lights API and all this stuff. So build some other cases and and use uh, examples uh, with RabbitMQ, with Kafka, with WebSockets, with you know different technologies, and build all of them. They will serve as documentation and examples, but also uh, for us to test uh, the, the spec and see how it fits. But so far, what I've tried, it, it looks like it can be that. It can be fine. So as I said, crossing my fingers that no bigger problems appear uh, from now on. I mean, crossing my fingers, it's not uh, everything can be fixed, right? Uh, it's just that I don't want to keep fixing stuff. <laughs> I just want to release version two, version two as soon as possible. Um, so, so we can build stable tooling on on top of the the spec, right? And and yeah. So in the next uh, week or so, I'll I'll contact you, uh, especially uh, Ukash. So I'll contact you about the, the state of the JavaScript parser and the spec, and because you also maintain the converter in Go, so if you want to convert to version two, um, you need to know how <laughs> how it looks like now, right? Um, and I'm planning, I don't know what you think about it, on releasing a release candidate too in the meantime, so we have another version, still release candidate. This time looks like it's gonna be definitive one, the final one, because um, it's the fix from the previous one, right? So, and with a lot of uh, incorporated feedback as well that, that I had in different meetings and different, uh, uh, with different people, right? So, so yeah. Um, what do you think about releasing release candidate two? before going to the final one. So, so we jump from, from, the ra from the last release candidate to the final version, there should be no changes, right? So we know that this is the, the final one, right? Otherwise, I, uh, I risk delivering version two with, uh, with problems, with errors, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then it's a, it's, it's a, it's a mess, right? Uh, I think the, the the question from my side would be how many reviews from many different parties you received. Um, so maybe if a lot, so then maybe release candidate two is um, a way to go. But my the other question would be how how different is release candidate one from release candidate two? It's a totally different one. Nah, well, no. <laughs> Uh, no, no, not not really. It's uh, something's changed. Uh, change. For instance, I uh, while reviewing the, the the other release candidate, um, I we noticed uh, with with some people, we noticed that um, there are some arrays in the spec uh, where it's not necessary to have arrays, like for instance in servers. Servers will be better with a map. 
So the map key could be the name of the server. So for instance, you could have uh, servers and then each key could be the environment. Imagine staging, production, development, whatever, instead of being an array. Why is it a problem to be an array? Uh, or it's, it's worse to have an array? It's because there's a planned feature uh, to launch after version two, which is um, overlays. And overlays consist of putting two async API specs on, on top of the other, right? And it will modify parts of the, uh, so the, 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 the one on top will modify parts of the one uh, below, right? So, and it, it follows JSON merge patch algorithm. Or we want to do, or I think it's 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 the best way to go because it's already a standard and we know how to. There are lots of tooling, so you don't have to implement it yourself, right? Um, and JSON merge patch replaces uh, arrays. They don't they don't merge the arrays. So if you if you have one array with one two, with numbers one and two, and you have another array with three and four, you don't get one two three four. You get three four. Uh, the the array gets replaced, right? Um, so I was trying to avoid having arrays as much as possible where it's not really necessary, right? Um, and one of them was servers, which I think if you want to, and this is very important because uh, overlays are really important for runtime. For instance, if you if you have a, uh, an API management tool, um, the 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 person who designed the API might not have any knowledge about uh, the, the where the server is, where the broker is located, right? It's it's the API management tool who, who will apply on top this information, right? And but you don't want to you want to merge, you don't want to replace, right? Um, so that's one, and the other one is about the parameters, uh, channel parameters. It's it was uh, it was uh, an array, and right now the key of the map. Is the name of the parameters, which is which makes sense, right? So, so yeah, these are I think these are the big uh, the bigger changes. Uh, protocol info was causing a lot of confusion with this name, so so I renamed them to bindings, and let's try let's try it with this release candidate too and see. If it mm, sticks to to people, to so if they understand what it is, these are protocol bindings, right? Uh, and it it seems to be the the, the norm to call this information binding. Um, so so yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm, I'm confident that this is the the, the way to go. Um, and aside from that, um, there 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 has been a few restrictions. Um, on the payload information. So the payload information, before we thought that we could support uh, protobuf and, and XML style formats. And so I put a, res a restriction there that we only accept uh, YAML and JSON um, formats for now. And we will explore in the next versions um, this support for protobuf and, and other uh, non-JSON or non-YAML JSON formats. Uh, the ID is not mandatory anymore. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, because that <laughs> I mean that that was that was stupid. Because uh, even it, for myself, I was I was creating examples, and I, I was always forgetting about it. And <laughs> because it has to be URN type. I was using URN colon test <laughs> everywhere. It's like uh, it doesn't make sense to have an ID when you were, when you don't need it, right? So so yeah, optional. And trades has been separated between operation trades and message trades. Um, instead of um, right because that was a design uh, a design problem. We were specifying traits in the operation object and in the message object, but um, in components we had only components traits. Uh, so if you're gonna parse this trait, 
how do you know which one is it? Is a component trait type or, or, if, or if its type is a message trait? Um, it was difficult, so I separated both. Um, yeah, I think pretty much this corrected some problems here and there, but big changes are there. I'm, I'm gonna create the, the converter for Node.js, I think, or, or we can discuss, we can list these changes uh, if you want. Uh, for the converter for Go, maybe. Yeah. So the best. Would be, so listening to listening to you now uh, and hearing all those, um, even if they are tiny changes, I would. So my recommendation would be, let's go as soon as possible uh, with the RC two. Mm -hmm. And in the RC two list, uh, the changes, the the change log between yeah. RC one and two, and then we can. Um, and if we really agree that the RC2, in theory, should not change at all, it's rather for to enable others to build tools already and try out, then that would be a nice approach. Then we have, uh, quickly, you have RC2, and we can already start changes in the converter. Yeah. Because now, like, for example, Martin joined because he actually already started checking the the parser and he um, he simply had some questions regarding the parser and the spec. Mm -hmm. but now I'm thinking if it makes sense to for him to really start uh, improvements in the parser if at the end there are some changes anyway. Mm. Uh, big, uh, there are big changes in terms of the... Uh, how can I say? So in terms of features, it's the same, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is that the syntax has changed. So it's a breaking change in terms of uh, syntax, right? Uh, like I said, for instance, uh, with uh, arrays to maps and all this stuff, right? Uh, and traits, for instance, don't support variables anymore because it was really weird. <laughs> it was really strange. So it's like, okay, it looked like a hack. And I said, okay, let's be conservative. Um, so I can I can probably separate those uh, or, or list those now on the change log for RC2 uh, in the next days. Um, and yeah, we can work, we can work on there on the list of changes that then and, and, and examples as well as well. Um, examples of how it looks like now, like uh, example documents. Like for instance, I, I have some example documents. I, I actually migrated all the, the examples in the Node.js parser. They all look like, um, oh, let me share it with you. So, okay. so, so the JS parser is actually supporting already the, let's say RC2 that is not yet created. Exactly. I'm, 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 I actually uh, call this um, unstable version because I, I, I wanted to, to try at the same time I was fixing bugs in the spec. So I called it uh, unstable. Um, so before you find it, Ma Martin, maybe I'm wrong actually. So if the JS parser already supports the RC2 that is not yet created, maybe we can actually continue and not just like skip it for one week. What do you think? I mean, Sorry, listening. <clears throat> did you hear me? Yeah. Say again. I, I didn't. Uh, I did not. Uh, uh, yeah. So I um, so I wanted to ask Ma Martin about his opinion, but I think he. Is he... Martin, you there? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, I have problems with connection still. But I'm, oh. maybe it's really faster, I'm just sorry. Okay, um, so let me rephrase. Um, so, because now I think let's wait for official RC2, but if the JS parser is already ready and supports RC2, then maybe you can continue, we don't really have to wait. You mean with with parser or with uh, with Go parser, yeah. Actually, this is like uh, the question is who uh, and uh, should I regenerate those 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 uh, structures that will 
can give us Jason because this is kind of I, I believe this is the only the the, the major changes goes there for for the for those types that will be on. Um, yeah, that was generated with a quick tool that I created. So, so if we will have this kind of uh, those, uh, I believe the rest of the changes is not that, uh, you know. Okay. I, I think at least that this is like if we, because this is kind of a change of the container, right? So it's like uh, maps instead of mm -hmm. or, or vice versa. So it's like not, not I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I believe this is not kind of a big deal for us. Mm -hmm. but we, we need to check it, but I, I believe we can, we can this is like some some changes in the types, and uh, and we should be we should be good, I think. That's good then. So uh, I'm I'm sending this repo there. This is Actually, what we, what we use to generate all these models, right? All these structures, uh, and as it says there, is a quick quick hack. So don't rely so much on this. I. I I uh, created it as a way to generate at least uh, the 99% of it, and then uh, I did manually the other ones, right? Uh, so you don't have to write all the structs for the spec manually, right? Actually, we can we can also check if the parser is not kind of compatible, sorry, parser, but uh, converter is not compatible. We can, if you have uh, this release candidate too, uh, some, some some example. We can we can even start the parser right now, and it's like uh, accepting the uh, URL. So if you just somehow expose it on GitHub as a row file, we can just check if it works or if it doesn't work. Yeah, actually, the the, the my uh, here in the chat, the first link is a, is an example of the the RC two. Let's call it like that already. Okay, so this already has the new the new syntax. Uh, and if you look at the first line, it says async API unstable, right? I was using unstable, so to make it clear that you should not use this version, right? But now I finished and I think it's uh, somehow good, unless we find, we find something really bad, right? But I think this could be now, this, this, this type of, uh, this spec can be um, RC2 already. Just, but sir, where is the example? Because I can't find it. It's under in the, the lip. In the chat, uh, here in the. Yes, yes, yes. I have this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, GitHub uh, repository, but I can't find the example itself. Uh, look. No, so in the in the chat of this discussion, you have two links from Fran. The first one points to async API YAM file, and the second one. I just I have just uh, check out this rep repo. This is the one. No, no, I don't. Maybe it's somewhere else. No, oh, now I have it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but oh, this sorry, I sent the same. The same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, separating this. Okay, great. Okay. And yeah, okay. Uh, here I'm, I'm I'm testing some of the new stuff. For instance, you don't have uh, parameters, uh, but uh, I can I can easily adapt the other ones. So, and send it to you later. Okay. Okay. So so yeah. And what else? <laughs> so I think it's mostly that. Um, it's the, the the JavaScript parser. By the way, I renamed the the repo. To parser dash js instead of node.js. Mm -hmm. So we make it clear that it's not just for node.js. And, and yeah, um, in the next days or weeks, because I'm doing too many things at the same time, um, I'll try to update the, um, the generator as well, the generator, and to use a JavaScript parser and update the, um, the playground too as well. So, so we can test there and we can easily use them for, for testing to understand if we are doing it well or not. Um, and yeah, any updates on the side? So the good stuff is that we also this week start, um, so we don't only start working on the parser, but also the React component. 
nice. uh, to support to zero only. Um, so we will already start supporting the RC2, not the RC1. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go for RC2 only. Directly. Okay. So we'll start, yeah. Yep. So if you need, if you need uh, from me, um, so Martin, to, you said that um, it would be great to have these uh, examples with the RC2, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so you yes, can yes. start working on the on the parser. Um, so aside from that, if you need something else from me, I think uh, parser, the J the JavaScript parser, I think it's ready for you to use whenever uh, whenever you need it, for instance, for, for the async API React component. Um, I think, yeah, I think you can use it already. And uh, actually, I will, I will check it out because I was, I was checking the, the Go one, the, the, um, the, the, the parser Go, because we started to work on the, yeah. some updates for, for it and I have some, some questions and basically those are like, Partially some some infrastructure related questions because uh, uh, can we can we talk about it right now or we, we have no, something no, no, else for sure for sure later. Yes. but regarding regarding Go mm, mm, bear in mind that I'm not a Go expert so no no no, no. this is not about this is absolutely not, those are not Go Go related questions those are uh, this is CI questions slash some 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 other questions yeah. related to rather the the, the Spec itself, not not just go stuff. Okay. So, so basically, uh, we have a CI and we have a tra tra Travis right now, right? And for for the for the converter, I've uh, um, I've uh, added also the Travis uh, Travis configuration, but I didn't not I didn't test the, the the releases, and also I've noticed on the parser uh, for Go, there is also Travis. But the releases are like kind of a little bit. Uh, uh, they are versioned, and the binaries are under the, uh, the the version control. So we could also fix that if you if you don't mind, because yeah, it's like they are right now. They are like uh, somewhere else. I, I was also planning to 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 kind of rearrange the the the, the layout of the of the how how the things will be set in the in, in the terms of packages, and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is also there is also one question because uh, this this, this um, uh, the parser itself it's like uh, I was I was checking the the this document for the architecture of it and there are like several parts of it the the the, the higher level schema parser the, those schema parser those Avro and and uh, Open API and those proto buffers that will join later on and some extensions and my question is like if wouldn't it be better to have like those all those schemas like um, move to another repository I mean it's like kind of I was uh, thinking maybe it would be better to have this parser as uh, something that somebody could combine uh, compose I mean that if you just want uh, one you just pick one if you want all you you have a, you, you can have all it's like th this yeah. this kind of approach yeah. maybe because for example not everybody uh, needs to have Avro yeah exactly the, if the well, that's a good point yeah we, we didn't separate it in the beginning because um, you know for ease of development right basically uh, okay, so so, uh, but but you, are you uh, it's, it's it's okay with you if if uh, this, this doesn't have to necessarily be right now. So it's like, uh, but like the direction to to migrate to. I was, yeah. I was just no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to the, uh, with that. Yeah. actually, I think I think you know better than I, to be honest. So because uh, this would you know I'm in your hands. <laughs> Because it would give us a kind of, you know, if somebody would like to, to, to do some sort of a parser, he would just have a place that he could simply create a repo and just add something on top of the parser. So it would, he, 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 he kind of shouldn't know everything about the parsing, but only about the schema that he's like willing to, mm -hmm. to convert, right? So this is a kind of small yeah. change maybe in terms of how it could it could evolve uh, later on, and, uh, and I would also uh, like to ask you about if it's okay if I would change some some of the uh, some of the APIs. I mean, uh, right now we have this parse um, interface, which is accepting uh, binary uh, RSLs actually of, of bytes, 
right? And it's like, can we can we change it to reader? And and because this is like kind of more open uh, interface, so we could just, for example, fetch it from the from the uh, web link or whatever. The reader is like you can have string reader, you can have a, a HTML reader or whatever reader. And it's like kind of more generic uh, type for 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 you know, mm -hmm. for, for interface for, for that of, of that kind. It's like sim it would be sim something similar to to converter. It's like converter has also the reader on the on the he accepts the reader and he writes to writer. And uh, I was also hoping maybe if we could kind of um, have those uh, more more generic types yeah. on the on the interface. So I would just uh, when I have uh, when I have some sort of proposal, I would just simply um send you the the the, the, the proposal because i'm just i was just right now uh, actually i started today and uh, the story and so i was just like thinking about everything checking everything and, and i have do not have right now the full answer how would i like to to, to you know to have it but but i was thinking about readers and more generic types in general as mm -hmm. comes to those I think, uh, I think the, methods. Way, the best way is you create issues for the things that you want to change okay and we discussed there, but I think everything makes sense. Uh, to be honest, uh, this Go parser was uh, highly experimental and done by mostly by me. And then Ruben, Ruben did something quick as well, but uh, mostly by by myself. And I don't know Go. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, no, this is this is this is the problem. Feel free, feel free to change. Uh, no, what I'm saying with this is not to justify myself. What I'm saying is, is that uh, feel free to change everything. Uh, okay. You know, for sure, you know better than I, right? So, so feel free to make uh, all the changes you think uh, uh, this parser needs, and uh, to make it look good. And I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Honestly, I, I, I cannot tell you if it's a good idea or not because I don't know. I, I don't know so much about Go, right? So. Okay. So yeah, everything that you said uh, sounds good to me. Like for instance, splitting different uh, packages uh, for the schema parsers. Um, I will say that uh, you can probably leave only one uh, inside, which is the open API one. Uh, the open API schema parser is the default schema parser for the spec. So probably only leave this inside the, the, the package. Um, so people don't have to always install two, right? And and then for people who wants to who want to have something else like Avro, for instance, they install another package. Uh, yes, because I was also hoping for you know for changing the methods. I had. The, the the in general changing how the way how you how you would compose such a such a parser. Uh, you would, I was hoping for for some sort of a functional options that you could extend the 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 the. the the configuration, so you could just pass pass everything you want, and it would be like kind of uh, open and also. So to say, I, I would just maybe I would just uh, as we as we agreed uh, do uh, issue, so so it will be kind of a uh, written and and uh, you know um, more formalized, I think. But but yeah. I was hoping that kind of those are not gigantic changes, but kind of a uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think if it's written, if it's written, other people will be able to participate people who are not in the talk now um yeah and and people who can't join but they they want to participate but they, people cannot join now to the to the call right so yeah. Um, so yeah i think it's it's a uh, but it, for me it makes total sense eh, what you want to do there Okay, great. A few more questions because uh, also I've read somewhere that the beautified version is kind of uh, uh, something that you expect from from out of the out of the parser, right? Is it, is yeah. it can we change this just like like to be kind of a flag or something like this? Because it's like we are like in the kind of opposite. Uh, situation because this is like mostly from one service to another and we just kind of do not uh, for example use this uh, beautified version can it be kind of a flag for this command line uh, version or is it okay yeah so the, so the idea initially the idea was to have a beautified version because we have things like based uh, based channel and based topic but we don't have by the way this this has been removed in, in rc2 as well Base channel is not part of the spec anymore, but before it was. So what we did was to concatenate 
base channel with each channel, right? So why why we were doing and we were removing base channel. So um, we were doing this to simplify the life for the tooling creators. For instance, in a generator, you don't have to be uh, joining all the all the channel names with the base channel, right? Um, so that was that was the main idea behind uh, the beautify and uh, solve solve things like this or applying the trades and and the, in the in the final document you don't have trades so people don't have to deal with trades when they are creating their own tooling um, but um, but yeah I, I mean feel free to to uh, to put it as a as a flag or or or, or not. Yes, because I believe this is this is like something that somebody would like to have, but not like uh, all the time, right? This is like some some sort of a, a flag which could kind of be handy for for turning it on and off, or not off but turning it on. Yeah, I agree. This, yeah. Is, this is okay with you, right? Because it's like I I I I think I I read this on the on this uh, technical specification side that there is was explicitly uh, mentioned that this is like a beautified output mm. yeah I, 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 yeah i agree i agree this can be this can be uh, under a flag for sure okay be, uh, i think right now the the only thing that you will you will have to beautify if you want to call it like this is mm -hmm. resolving the traits for instance uh going trait by trait and merging them to the parent object um and then removing the tra removing traits um other than that i don't think uh the spec changes so now uh, i cannot think on anything else that needs to be beautified so um, okay yeah. so, I okay, so, 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 so I, if it's possible i would just put it on as a flag because it's like more we will save yeah. some space i think okay yeah it, it, you can even have something like I don't know. Instead of a, a flag for beautifying, you can have a flag called uh, per per feature. Like for instance, resolve traits true or false like this. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I, I, actually, actually, I need to have uh, take a look at this those changes in traits because it's like maybe this is some sort of a something that will change stuff. But I was just like hoping to have this JSON not being like you know extra extra large just like uh, smaller mm -hmm. yeah okay uh, uh, another question is like uh, this is like more to 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 to, to, to the schema itself uh, related because we have those uh, references right and those references can those are like pretty similar as the json schema references right they it's like you you references you reference something which is like not that is somewhere right and it's like there are two kind of uh three actually but two uh types of uh references the one is like you have the reference in the same document which is like with hash and the second one is like a different file or it's like different location but this is kind of a pretty pretty similar this is like HT, http or, or like file so it's like kind of a pretty similar i mean this is like a different file right yeah. so it's uh, and my question is like you just simply uh, take the content of the of the reference and just simply inject it in the object where it's like located right so for example if you have some properties which is which has an object uh, with the reference to something we just simply Take the uh, referencing object and inject its properties, all the all the all the kind of let's say right. keys from from the map to to this object. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that's the, the, the idea of the dollar ref. Yeah. That's and my question is like, do do we uh, do, are those? Uh, do, I, I believe that those references may only be objects, right? And uh, uh, well, if <laughs> good question. Maybe they are. Uh, I cannot think on an example that will not be an object. I think they are all objects. Yeah. So, so we can we can assume that this is like the the references are always objects. I mean, this is because this is like mm -hmm. if you if for example have a number or something like this string or it's like it will be uh, it will break everything, right? If you if you yeah. kind of reference it so then. Because it's like you need yeah, to have. Yeah, it's uh, all the objects. Yeah, it's all the objects. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. yeah, so yeah. this is like a, a also 
good to good to know. Uh, and uh, uh, I was also having some some questions about the those um, uh, extensions because extensions though are those properties that have x minus and uh, kind of extend. Mm -hmm. And I I'm kind of uh, not fully get the picture of um, if we have them. Do we do we have them already implemented in the parser right now, or they are they are not there because uh, I didn't. They should not be parsed. No, so oh, okay. the, par the parser should, should ignore them. So the idea behind so X dash is for people to put whatever they want there. You know, and but th this this will be just simply ignored, right? And this is like something that is like for rather for 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 use of uh, um, for, this is for users uh, of schema, right? This is like parser is like not doing okay. It's not doing anything for for us. It's not doing anything. It's just for people to put some information there, and but we need to keep them. You cannot remove them, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is like uh, okay, okay. This is like uh, this is clear. But I was just like uh, uh, yeah. I was. But this is like uh, this answers everything. Like uh, what you what you what you described. Uh, and in the future, we plan to support something like a specification. Uh, sorry, specification extension. Um, uh, catalog or something, and so you can have something like I don't know X dash Twitter in the catalog in the extension catalog, and they will be validated. If you want, you can say okay. hey, I want to validate these extensions. So that's a way for people to use the same extensions. It's a way to standardize ex extensions. Extensions are by nature, something specific for your use case that you might not want to share with the, with others. But in some other cases, uh, people use extensions as a way to do something with the spec that's still not possible. And if we learn with this, um, this extension can become uh, a feature of the next version, you know. Um, so at some point, but that's that's for, for, the, for, the, for the future and I don't think it's a problem now. But at some point, we may want to validate certain extensions. Okay, so so we just have to have had them, and uh, but we will have a, a kind of use case like later on for them. So it's like yeah. this is yeah. pretty cool. Well, now just ignore them. Yeah. Okay, so so the last question is like, and this is the one that I spotted today. It's like um, we have this uh, reference, right? And this reference has a this nature that it's it looks like similar to 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 the directory, let's say path or something like this, right? So you have a uh, this hash, for example, and then you have a property, another, another, another nested, and you just like going to the place that you are referencing, right? And um, actually, I've also noticed that some of the channels are also having slashes. So it's like kind of uh, it's just like uh, did you the channels because it's like kind of channels need to have the format of a URL. That's why. That's and my question is like, uh, do, don't we won't we have kind of a problem with referencing some stuff because it's like, you know, this channel is like its name. It's for example, I, I will send you uh, maybe maybe the example channel name. But it's like pretty everywhere. It's like uh, so. So, for example, those are events, street lights, slash lights, measured or whatever name, right? And when you are referencing, this is kind of not nested property, right? It's like this is like a one, only one. Uh, yeah, there are there are uh, one place, right? So it's like, don't we have a problem with referencing since those yeah. channels are like named this way? Jason Pointer spec covered this case. Uh, let me. I don't remember the syntax. I think I feel the syntax. I don't remember now, but I can share in a minute with you. But there is there is a syntax to to avoid having this problem. Um, oh, hey, that sorry, reason, sorry. The reason we are we are having slashes as a URL, as a URL path, um, it's because before it was a whatever kind of string. Uh, but some, but some protocols like AMQP or MQTT use um, separators. Like for instance, in AMQP you have uh, the dot separator, and in, a in MQTT you have slashes as separators. So as a way to unify all of them, uh, we chose slashes because then for tooling it's going to be easier. 
because you you can parse URLs with I mean, every language has a URL parser, right? So that's um, that was the main reason. Like, let's choose URL style uh, channels, and then we convert depending on the on the on the protocol. We convert slashes to dots or slashes uh, to something else. Um, that yes, would... but my my question was rather because we can have problems with referencing to those. No, no, no. It's, it's... Or we we won't we won't reference them. No, no, no. That, that it's possible. You do, you will not have this problem. Uh, let me try to find it. Or we have to some sort of some some kind of escape those. Uh... Yeah, you have to escape them, but um, but there is a symbol for that. I don't remember now. I, I'm asking because this is like uh, some that also this parser has to do it needs needs to uh, needs to also follow the reference so so i have to somehow implement it in the in the parser there is um i'm trying to find it but uh but if it's uh, if if it's in the json schema uh, i will i will find it uh, if no i will just uh, um, so I, I will try to Mm -hmm. Here you have it. Uh, this is the, the RFC describing JSON pointer. So the the last part of the ref is a JSON pointer, okay? And this is a standard. So they have it covered. So if you want to have, ah, look, if you go to page four, mm -hmm. you will see it. In page four, you have two examples in the beginning. You have example of, uh, it says, for example, given the JSON document, full bar bass, blah, blah, blah. In the third line, it says A slash B. Like it, it contains a slash in the key name. And can you see it? No, 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 just like uh, this uh, page. Oh, this is page four, okay, okay. Is this, I have it, I have it. For, for example, given just this, I have it, I have it. So yeah, it's fucking slow. And, and so the syntax is having, um, Ah, okay, okay, okay. I have this is like this tilde, or this is like yeah. It's like tilde one. So one the yeah. It will be like this. So. But we need do we need to some sort of a mapping for 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 this parser to to cover this or it's like because uh, I'm just wondering. It needs to follow this spec. These are okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Needs to follow this. Okay. In JavaScript, this is easier because you know it's already implemented. <laughs> yes, yeah, for, for, for Go, it's like all, for, for the schema itself. It's not 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 bad. It's like uh, uh, the problem will be only when when we have to decode this this because it's like uh, from one hand we have a uh, we have this uh, schema parser. I mean JSON path, uh, JSON schema parser. But from the other, we need to also support this when we are like. Resolving the references, mm -hmm. so it's like. Uh, but, but it's good to know that it's covered. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's it. Yeah, exactly. So in in the um, let me send you an example. So ref parser. Uh, let me try to find this. This this is the JavaScript tool that parses all, specifically these pointers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if you want to find all the cases, maybe it's easier to look at the code and, and follow the JavaScript code and you can see all the, the, the cases, right? So you don't forget about anything. It's, uh, it's called the, the, referent, the reference. Yes, 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 this is exactly what we, we have in, in Parser. This is exactly in the, in the place where it's like yeah. going through all the, all the nested objects and it's like trying to go to the objects that they are referencing and so on and so forth. So it's like, uh, I was just wondering because there was no example with, with those channels actually, but maybe they could be also be referenced, right? So it's yeah. like, okay. you have to have it some hard cover, but it looks like it's actually in spec. So it's like- Well, actually, no, actually you cannot reference any channel now that I'm thinking. Um, because if we do not reference channels, we're just like we're golden. Because it's like the this is the only. Uh, I no, think. But, I mean, it, it, in any case, you have to parse this JSON pointer, right? So uh, actually, yes, yes, yes. Because those are yes, yes. Technically, yeah. And, and any other, any other, and for instance, you can have an extension or something, some other object 
that may contain these uh, classes, right? Yes, 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 this is true that it's like maybe it was not in the examples, but uh, it, it's it's possible to have some yeah, such exactly. a such a such a uh, reference. It's okay, but but this this is this is like uh, right now it's 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 clear, so it's uh, no no problem, I think. I mean, at, at uh, any time, if if you have some questions, just uh, throw questions throw questions to me whenever you have them, and don't wait for the meetings. Whenever you have questions, just uh, send me. Yeah okay because it's like today I had like I was just like going through everything and I was just like you know trying to 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 check as much as possible just to have you know uh, something to 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 eventually discuss about because it's like uh, yeah but but this, those those were like like uh, major questions that I had it's like so I have yeah, thanks for covered all the questions. thanks for all the questions that uh... No, all, thanks for uh, thanks for answering. <laughs> no, we forget sometimes that um, there are some things that we we take for granted, and and some other people may think like why, <laughs> right? So, so thanks for that. Huh? Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. So um, speaking about conferences, speaking about speaking. <laughs> so. Um, there are two processes uh, open right now. One is for the uh, API specifications conference in Vancouver, Canada uh, in oct late October. And then there's the API days Barcelona. Um, both uh, CFP are open, like they are not open, but they're still looking for people. So, so feel free to submit if you want. Um, in the case of API Days Barcelona, um, it's better if you don't submit anything related to async API because there are already too much content about it. And and um, and for the API specifications conference in Vancouver, um, I'm just saying this. I know that you 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 know this, uh, but I'm just saying this for people watching the recording. Um, feel free to apply or feel free to contact me and I'll uh, and I'll send the the, um, the submissions um, cool anything else uh, about release candidate the second version uh, uh, do you think it could also delay the actual release of version 2 no, actually no I think ideally if everything goes well I think uh, RC2 should be at some point renamed to first, right? Yeah. So it's just a, as a way for us to establish a milestone, like here, mm -hmm. we did it well now, uh, until here. And, yeah. and if there's something major, we change it. So we probably have a risk candidate three that will last for, I don't know, two weeks or so. Um, but if it's something minor, we we don't, fix it now, we fix it on a 2.0.1 or 2.1 or something like this, right? <coughs> okay, so we, but we won't be accept, uh, yeah, accepting new features or new requests yeah. for, okay. No, no, it's just that this, this, this is not about features, this one is about fixing stuff. Like, fixing the stuff, yeah, okay. It's about um, realizing that there's something wrong, like yeah, broken, okay. And we fix the uh, minor things, but features will be, I mean, actually, in our RC1, we were not accepting features anymore. Mm -hmm. So we, for, with RC1, it yeah, was exactly. like, okay, we, okay. we cut here, right? Mm -hmm. We cut here, and from there on, we, we don't accept features anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, we're just uh, cleaning, basically. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm confident that what we have now is it's going to be version 2 or very similar, right? Because right. minor minor changes will be fixed uh, afterwards. We don't have to do it now. Okay. Yeah. We, need, we need to release at some point. <laughs> Otherwise, it's gonna take forever, right? <laughs> uh, and do you think the the no the Node.js parser would have enough time for the testing and verification? Now we are close to the release to. So um, I think it will have time. But we don't have to release the stable version of the parser at the same time we release the version two of the spec. Yeah, 
yeah that also okay yeah so um, yeah I'm, I'm always trying to um, take those separately think about mm -hmm. tooling and the spec separately mm -hmm. uh, we can have a re release cycle for the spec that's really different to for the tooling and actually we have to um, mm -hmm. and think about it like for instance in the case of uh, the case of the parser is a little bit different but the rest of the tooling yeah uh, people will probably don't uh, adapt to version 2 until months later right or yeah. Later, or, yeah. or or when we release version 3 of the spec uh, people might take uh, time to yeah but i was just concerned because parser is very tightly coupled with the version i think uh, yeah that's why that's why I'm, I'm now working on a feature of the parser yeah. is um uh, working on an api mm -hmm. so it's not a feature it's actually working on, on an api that's not just parse and it will return a json object uh, so you will have methods like uh, get channels or get server oh, okay. and all this stuff okay. and we we dig into the json and return the information correctly formatted for you so mm -hmm. in this case, there are breaking changes in the future uh, mm -hmm. people can so so for instance there will may there, there may be breaking changes in the spec in the future yeah. but uh, probably they don't affect the code the parser mm -hmm. because everything will be abstracted in the code in the mm -hmm. in the parser api right so for instance imagine what i just said imagine we change back uh, the servers from from a map to an array we change back um, mm -hmm. the api will not change Right, you still have to call get servers, and you'll get a list of servers or a map of servers. But um, it will not be a breaking change for you because you you still get the information in in the mm -hmm. same format, right? Yeah, and also I saw I, I looked at the the PR that it's like yeah it's the the current the the version you are working on is totally different than the the already existing one in the master branch. Sorry, say again. The, the the node just parser the current the versions you are working on that branch is uh, totally different from the one in the master branch in the node just parser the version two you mean I don't know. no no the node just version uh, that node just parser is your branch or did you merge it in the master recently yeah ah, okay yeah, yeah yeah okay okay so that was maybe two days ago maybe ah uh, yeah yeah i just merged it today uh, this morning ah, okay Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was looking. It was a lot different than the previous implementation. Yeah, I had a lot of conflicts, and I had to do a lot of. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that then it may, it makes sense. And if you if you uh, need any help, like there would be a lot of things you still pending. Uh, you can can you create? Like, it would be good if you can create just each issue with a title and things to do. And I can maybe pick up or someone else can pick yeah. up. On 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 Senghub, I I always go, tell to go to Senghub. Mm -hmm. um, and there you have on the tooling workspace you have a backlog right where you can pick uh, any issue there is this what you mean or on the zen hub yeah on zen hub yeah oh, okay there's a backlog column with all mm -hmm. the issues and and the and there's an in progress review all this stuff right so okay. I try to keep this very up to date, at least with what, what I'm working uh, with, what I'm working on. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean I think that the, the okay, yeah okay maybe yeah this is this is something I was looking for. I was checking the GitHub issues, but yeah, I think the most of the content is here, not in the actual issues. It's actually the same. There is a there is an extension. There is a Singhub stack extension, uh, and okay. it will so it will I get it. your your GitHub page. It will add a new tab to your GitHub page, and you can see oh, okay. it in there. So you don't have to log into into Sangha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that's the best way. And yep. I, I I usually go to Sangha because that gives you more information. But mm. again, Sangha and GitHub are um, not synchronized because it's not synchronized. It actually, Sangha fetches via uh, github api all the information mm. so there's no information in same app and another one in github it's the same information okay mm -hmm. so um, yeah it's an it's like an, a, a better ui for github <laughs> but yeah but yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs>
but just the UI. I mean, UI plus okay. some features. But. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. I think that's the, this is the best place to to pick up uh, issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at them yeah. and, and just move them to in progress and assign it to you. And I mean, you're part of the organization now, so you can do it. Okay, yeah. uh, sure, sure, yeah. Perfect. So um, let me stop uh, recording. Thanks, by the way, for joining in this summer time. Uh, uh,